Okay, today we're going to be talking about uh, natural selection, which is actually part of a theory by Charles Darwin. Uh, this is coming from textbook pages 290 through 293, and we're going to use a foldable to do this. So I want to uh, do the foldable first. Uh, we're going to cut around the outside perimeter, the outside edge. And once you have trimmed around this outside edge, you're going to fold on the dotted lines. I know some things you cut on the dotted lines. This one you fold on the dotted lines. Uh, so once we get that cut out, we're going to take these and we're going to fold on those dotted lines or as close to those dotted lines as we can get. And this side you'll also fold. Notice I didn't finish cutting. I'm doing the folds first. And then I'm going to put glue on just the flaps. And so here is a thin line of glue on both of those flaps. And this is going to be glued down to page 49 in my journal. Uh, probably line it up with that red margin would be a good placement. And now that those are glued down, I'm going to finish cutting. Uh, I'm going to cut on this solid line here in the center. You don't have to highlight yours. I just highlighted in class to show kids which lines to cut on. And then I'm going to cut to make little shutters on each side. I found this works better than cutting it first and then gluing it. So they all line up really nice and neat. And our title is going to be Charles Darwin. And today's date is the 10th. And so the first thing we're going to look at is who was Charles Darwin. And so part of that is on page 290. Um, it says, one scientist who made many observations about variation among species is Charles Darwin. Using his own observations along with the ideas of many other scientists, he formed a theory about how populations could evolve. In biology, evolution refers to the process by which a population gradually changes over time. And Darwin contributed a lot to the definition of evolution. So Charles Darwin was a naturalist. Uh, he was also a geologist. And he was on a trip on a British ship called the HMS Beagle. It set sail in 1831 from England and its job was to map the coast of South America. Remember they didn't have Google Earth then so they actually had to send people out to physically look at the coastline to draw the maps. Along the way Darwin was actually reading a book by a geologist called Charles Lyell and in it, that book he discussed the idea of how slow changes over long periods of time shape the Earth's surface. That kind of got him to thinking because he noticed in South America that there were seashells in the cliffs and that kind of confirmed because of the layers of the um, sedimentary rock that um, we know the lowest ones were deposited first and and so Darwin also collected fossil and animal specimens. He found fossils of large extinct mammals that looked similar to the bones of smaller living mammals. And he was in a place called the Galapagos Islands, which is off the coast of South America. He found similarities and differences among those animals. But he did notice that they looked similar to species that were on the nearby mainland of South America. Now remember, he's also a geologist, and so he knows about um, Pangaea, the theory that the continents separated, and so there might have been um, land from these islands that used to be part of South America, that sort of thing. Um, he collected different specimens, particularly finches 
and mockingbirds. Uh, we hear more about the finches than the mockingbirds. Um, from South America and from these Galapagos Islands. He noticed that the mockingbirds on one island were similar to the mockingbirds that he found in South America. But mockingbirds he saw on another island looked very different. He noted several differences among the mockingbirds of different islands and identified three different species of mockingbirds. So he wondered if the different mockingbird species had evolved over a long time from one ancestor species. So you're going to answer the question, what did Darwin note about mockingbirds that he found in the Galapagos? And Darwin observed both land and marine iguanas on the Galapagos Island. How might their skin color uh, improve their ability to survive their environment? So this is a land iguana that's colorful and it lives in dry areas. Look at its feet. Notice it has claws. Uh, this is a marine iguana. It's darker in color. It lives in uh, rocky or sandy beaches and it doesn't have the claws but it does have kind of webbed sort of feet. So these are all adaptations that might help that iguana to live. Okay so I'm going to open the flap that says who was Charles Darwin and I'm going to write behind it. And um, in 1831 he was on a boat um, and he studied the Galapagos Islands. He was an English naturalist and geologist, meaning he came from the United Kingdom or England. Uh, he lived from 1809 to 1882. He was known for his theory of evolution by natural selection, which most of that came from his studying of organisms on the Galapagos Islands. Now, realize he came up with all of these ideas um, in the 1800s. Um, DNA wasn't uh, officially um, discovered until 1953. The nucleus of a cell wasn't discovered until 1911. So it's not like he had all of this genetics and Punnett squares and all of that stuff to base this on. Mendel's observations about his pea plants weren't until weren't didn't happen until 1866. So this was not because of genetics. Okay, this was before genetics and. A lot of people didn't believe his theory of evolution by natural selection because he really couldn't tell them how it happened because he didn't know anything about dominant and recessive traits or DNA or any of that. He just knew that some species changed over time and he had evidence of that. On the other side it says what is an adaptation? List and describe one adaptation of a frog. Um, so <clears throat> adaptation is a characteristic that helps an organism to survive and reproduce in its environment. Notice this definition and the definition on the previous page mean exactly the same thing, but they aren't using the exact same words. You need to understand the meaning, not just recognize a word. Um, frogs. Frogs have lots of adaptations. Uh, their color for one, like if it's a tree frog, they're probably going to be whatever color the leaves of the tree are that it is inhabiting. Uh, if it's a, a land frog, it's probably going to be the color of the sand. We call that camouflage. That's an adaptation. Um, frogs use camouflage to stay hidden from their predators. Now they also might have webbed feet that help them to swim. They might have, um, they might secrete a poison or a toxin that makes predators less likely to eat them. But this is just one example of an adaptation that frogs have. So we're going to go on and describe the theory of evolution by natural selection. So these organisms are, that are better suited for their environment are more likely to survive and therefore because they survived they're going to reproduce which sends their traits, we now know it's their genes, but it sends these traits to the offspring or the next generation. That was essentially the theory of evolution by natural selection. Nature, the environment, is suited for one particular trait to be better than others. And so those that have it are going to live and reproduce. Those that don't have it are probably going to get less food or not be able to reproduce as much or whatever it happens to be, um, they're not going to make it. And so those traits don't get passed down. 
Um, what characteristics of finches did Darwin observe and what did he conclude? Okay, so he studied the beak shapes of finches, a finch is a bird, uh, on the Galapagos Islands and the coast of South America. Each island had different food sources. Um, maybe one had a, a really uh, hard-shelled, large uh, seed, like think a small coconut kind of thing, that in order to break it and eat it, you had to have a really strong, large beak. Um, animals that had that large beak would be able to eat. Animals that had little tiny beaks uh, wouldn't be able to eat it. Um, and so his idea was that either these animals all came to be on the island because they, uh, maybe they flew over, but he thought, no, that's kind of far for the, such a small bird to fly. So he figured they didn't fly. Maybe they were there because of when Pangea broke up, they, you know, shifted there. And but what he found was that each island had different food sources, and those food sources were um, really great for some bird sh beak shapes and not so great for others. Maybe it was a really tiny seed that was deep down into a pod, and you had to have almost tiny tweezer-like beak to get to it to eat. Um, the ones that had that kind of a beak would survive. The ones that didn't would die. And so over generation after generation, it started to change this finch bird beak to a different shape because it was more suited for its environment. Um, to evolve just means to change over time. Now think back, 1800s, uh, Charles Darwin was dealing with, um, one, not a lot of technology in his particular area that he was studying, but he also um, was saying that these creatures could change over time or and that kind of implied that maybe they weren't perfect and so at the time we remember that we have a large uh, group of our pop or large part of our population that is uneducated they, they don't uh, attend a formal education setting they are very much indoctrinated with religious beliefs and at the time uh, the church felt that or the religious societies felt that um, whatever was created by God was perfect and therefore wouldn't need any changes. So him saying that it was changing over time to better suit the environment kind of was not received very well because that was like saying that um, it was something wrong with it. And so that there was a big, huge divide um, between uh, your scientist and your religious views because of this... Um, this way of thinking. And so a lot of people, even today, still look at um, Charles Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection and and they think that it's not, you know, it's, it, that's not how it happened. And um, realize he, he couldn't tell them how it happened. Um, so it was really, and it went against the teachings of the church. So it was not a real popular theory. It wasn't even, you know, really much studied or accepted until much later.